you suffer any form of stress, anxiety or depression, then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Leonie and welcome back to my channel. I just had an amazing meeting with one of New Zealand's leading nutritionists, Ben Warren. Now Ben is running a series of seminars across New Zealand at the moment and he is looking at the connection between what we eat and how that affects not only our overall health but our mental health as well. Ben shared some really interesting insights this morning which I'm sure you'll find really valuable. So let's just get on with the interview. Hi Ben, it's so nice to meet you. Hi Leonie, lovely to meet you too. It's great to be here and we're talking about wellness and health and interestingly we're talking about a gut-brain connection. Yeah. Can you tell me what that is please? Yeah, it's basically the relationship between um, how the brain talks to the gut, uh, so that's sort of large intestine, small intestine, stomach, and then also how the micro biome, which is the community of organisms that live within the gut, how that talks to the rest of the body as well, including the brain. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a highway of communication, not only from the brain to the gut, but the gut to the brain. I guess the easiest way of describing it is, you know, we've probably all heard of a gut feeling. Yes, yeah. And so the research shows that. The research shows we have a gut feeling. Okay, and so that gut feeling is connected to how we are physically feeling? Absolutely, and mentally, and mentally. So yeah, the, the gut, and the, particularly the microbiota, in the, in the, the, so this micro, these organisms within the gut, they're, they're, they're communicating to the rest of the body through multiple pathways through the central nervous system, autonomic nervous system, through the immune system. Um, and, and so we are literally getting uh, a gut feeling we get, and it's changing behavior and how we think and feel. So have we stopped listening to that gut feeling? Is that is that what's happening? Yeah, I think there's probably a few things that even the research is really pointing to, to a number of levels of where we, we stop doing things. So, um, you know, we, we can, when we get stressed thoughts, that impacts our physiology. It uh, does? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so if we are stressed and yeah. busy, yeah. That, that affects our whole body. It affects our whole body, particularly I've got a lot of relationship around irritable bowel syndrome and stress, so increased stress and then problems in the large intestine. Right. Yeah, so it kind of drives down that way and then it also drives back up from the gut but when you have a problem in the gut, it starts having problems in, it, it affecting problems in the brain as well. And right. that's how we think and feel. Uh, okay, now and that's huge. How we think mm. as well. Yeah, um, that strikes a chord with me because I actually asked some of my followers over on Instagram mm -hmm. whether they had any questions for you. Oh yeah. And one of the questions that came up was around mental health. Yeah. And gut. So the connection, I suppose, between what we eat and our mental health. Yes. Is there a connection? Yes. It sounds like there's a big oh, connection. Yeah. Many, many strong connections from many levels. Um, you know, from a very basic level, if I was just to say to the to the people watching, you know, if you've had if I had a, a week where you've eaten really well, how did you feel? Right. You know, most people will go, I, I felt pretty good. And then you say, have you ever had a day where you've eaten like crap? And yes. And most yeah. people go, well, how do you feel? I feel like crap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and so on a very basic level, we know there's a strong relationship in the research between how, how what we eat and how we feel. Right. And, and there's multiple pathways for that, you know, the nutrients that we're getting from the food. But a lot of the, specifically regarding the gut, we're looking at how the, the foods we're eating are feeding the different strains of bacteria within our gut. Ah, and, and good and bad Good bacteria. and bad. Yeah, right. so when we eat sugar, we're feeding the unfriendly ones. Ah, uh, okay, uh, right. And, and that then causes a lot of uh, potential problems in health. Right, um, and, and in mental health? Uh, the research hasn't really got to that stage yet regarding uh, sugar and mental okay. health. Right. Well, actually, no, I say that. I just think of that. Um, there was a, a, a study looking at uh, the association between, this is a national study looking at association between sugar consumption and mental health, and the more sugar they ate, the, uh, the, the worse outcomes for mental that health. That's interesting. Okay, but, so but that's, that's a connection. Yeah, it's a connection, it's a correlation. No, yes. so it's not a, it's sort of like a scientific yes, right, study. Right. But, but, but there's something there's there. an association yes, there. Yeah, right. absolutely. Uh, and so, uh, but then, you know, eating, eating, eating basically plants, plant fibers, they feed the beneficial bacteria. And we, so we've really got to start thinking about, you know, feeding, feeding those beneficial bacteria. And the impact on, on this microbiome is huge. And one study, you know, num number of studies have been done with mice in yeah. this area. And then the, the, you're into human studies now. But, um, and, and what they showed is that if, if, you, if you have a mouse that has anxiety, and, and so you then take the microbiome out of that mouse and put it in a mouse that doesn't have anxiety. 
that, that that mouse will then develop anxiety because you've taken the microbiome, the bacteria out. And wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then on the other end, and so that's kind of like how the microbiome, the gut microbiome, yeah. can be driving problems in the brain and how we think and feel. And at the other end is if you take a mouse that doesn't have anxiety, um, and you look at its microbiome and it doesn't have anxiety, uh, and then you force it to swim. So they do swim tests, yes. and what it will mean, but they, so they force the mouse to swim. give it anxiety, you surely. Go, it gives it anxiety, and, and, and what they've now shown is that then that changes the microbiome, so that then the mouse develops a microbiome that's more associated with, with anxiety. Oh, that's so interesting. So it's, it really is, everything's affecting everything. So is that what's happening to us? Because obviously anxiety levels in, in people seems to be on the up and up. Yeah. So. Obviously, it's diet related. Mm. One thing you said earlier is interesting to me though. You said when you eat crap food, you feel like crap. I just wonder whether we've lost that sort of attuneness to our bodies. And I think sometimes we, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that we eat crap too often that yeah. we actually don't even know what oh, it feels like to have optimal a hundred, health. A hundred percent, a hundred percent agree. I mean, uh, we talk about that sugar's not a happy food. Yes. Uh, and yet, but you know, from a short-term hit Makes perspective, happy for a moment. exactly, and that's the problem: is we get this little dopamine hit, which is reward, feel good, neurotransmitter, and we get this little dopamine hit, so we feel good, you know, for an hour. Yes, but yeah. we're not getting the long, the long-term aspect from it. And so, uh, I definitely, definitely, big believer that we have the ability to listen to our bodies. For me, nobody knows our bodies better than ourselves. Exactly. But we we have kind of there's so much noise. There is so much noise. How do we get back to that? Back yeah. to basics and yeah. back to being like appreciating those gut feelings and listening to them and then acting on them. Yeah. How do we do, how do, we do that? that? I think we've got to start with some of the basics and foundation of that. You're moving away from. I want to start with the brain first. So like managing stress. Right. So you know whether that's mindfulness, meditation, breathing, generally spending time in nature, doing yoga, finding your non-negotiables that help you manage stress. So that's that's key. Are you saying yeah. that that's something Absolutely. that we all need to be we doing? We all need to be doing because it doesn't really matter what you're eating. If you're stressed while you're eating it, your body's not going to be able to break it down because okay. you're not going to get the nerve inflammation to break it down because the brain's kind of in the spiral flight response. Right. So the first part of the puzzle for us feeling as well as we possibly can, is to manage our stress levels and find our happy place. Absolutely. Like okay, yeah. so the more we can be in that place, no matter what's happening around us, the, 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 invariably the better gut health we're going to have. Okay, so do we need to do that every day? Yes, most likely. Okay, right, so we need to manage our stress, find out how we can do that, what works for us. Yeah. What's the second part of that? Next, the next, the next step is around the foods we're eating and making sure that, well, like, you know, so the basics around moving away from sugar. Right, Moving okay. away from Western style diet package, processed foods. A lot of research showing that the, um, the molecules in those foods are causing real problems in our gut and digestive system. Right. Um, I would be recommending moving away from gluten. Right, uh, okay. Find my work, you know, know that I'm not a huge fan of protein, it's kind of wheat, barley, and rye. Um, and the Dairy? Reason, yeah. Dairy for some people, yeah, absolutely, okay. definitely. But for not, some not, people. not necessarily for everybody. It's, okay. a, it's a wonderful protein if you can digest it, but it's very, the proteins rather, but, but, um, a lot of people do have trouble digesting right. it. And, and so, how do we know if we have trouble? Well, I, I guess you could do, um, if you, the big one with dairy, they can, it can be difficult to, to diagnose. Yeah, to see, yeah, we're right. testing. But yeah. I guess the big one is, is people have sinus issues, if they have asthma, they have eczema. For me, okay. those, those are really indicators that there's, 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 there's something probably going on, and they have a gut issue, that the gut right. could be driving or making those symptoms worse. Right. And so okay. I've, I've definitely been recommending uh, moving away. So for me, I had asthma since I was six, and, and it wasn't until I um, cut out dairy as a 27 year old that my asthma suddenly disappeared within a couple of weeks. Wow. And then, so that was one of the, the, the big, um, and that was through testing. I, I, saw, I saw I wasn't listening to my body then because I had too yes, much noise. Yes, yes, yeah, right. And, and, and so, um, but uh, yeah, I did testing and saw that I you know, didn't tolerate weight protein. And so I cut out whey protein, which obviously protein found in dairy, and, and that's when, uh, you know, my, within about two weeks, my asthma disappeared. Wow. And so, very, very commonly you see that. Right, okay. Yeah, with dairy. So then, what's the the, the, the main sort of guts of it? Then, yeah, I the suppose? main things you should be eating. Yeah. 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 I mean, whole food diet, whole foods, plants. Um, we've got to be thinking about. What about meat, though? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I think um, when, we look, when we look at meat, I, I'm. I'm completely for people eating, you know, high quality 
animal proteins. Right. So it does um, need to be high quality. Absolutely. I think there's um, a lot of problems associated with, with prolonged meat consumption are actually associated with, with the poor quality of, of the proteins that are getting grown. Okay, okay, and so, right. Yes. So just sausages or... Yeah, exactly. Pro highly processed package, okay. feedlot cattle that have a, a lot of omega-6 fatty acids in them which are pro-inflammatory because the, uh, the, the cows aren't eating grass, they're eating grains. Which, so we need to be eating organic meat? Well, ideally, you know, in, in a, you know if you go back... Um, my nan, she's passed away now, but, um, but, but I was chatting to her in her mid-80s and, and I was trying to describe to her what I, what I do and, 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 and I was like, oh, I help people eat and, we're, and so we started, and she was, and we started talking about organic and stuff and she was like, oh, that's just how food used to be. Exactly, and, uh, I'm exactly. Like, and, that, and you know, so we talk about organic kind of, it's a brand, it's this thing out there, but you know, at the end of the day, sort of hundred years ago, that's just what food was. Yes, right. And so, right. Um, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I'm a big fan of, of trying to eat as natural as possible, including, right. you know, organic spray free. But so it's going back to basics really, yeah. isn't it? What our nans used yeah, to do basically. absolutely. Eating these um, fermented foods. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. A lot of research, you know, even for social anxiety, has been shown that when you give people fermented foods, it improves their social anxiety. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Because of the bacteria, you're giving them... So kimchi and those sorts yeah, of foods. Yeah, you know, kimchi, right. sauerkraut, um, and, and kombucha. Uh, right. you know, Coconut yogurt, if you're dairy free. Right. Um, you know, there's lots and lots. Of, my studies of traditional cultures, I found that uh, they got, we're getting 12 to 15 servings of, of probiotics from their fermented foods every day. Because they, wow. they didn't have a refrigerator. So they were they were literally having to um, ferment you know, their food ferment. and just get it a different way. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's so and interesting. So now we're seeing that research around, and there's a number of strains in the research associated with benefit to mental health um, of these probiotics. Um, and so probiotics, by the way, just you know, watch as a, 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 a bacteria that have a known health benefit. Right. And, and so um, they're actually looking at psychobiotics now, so these are strains of bacteria that have benefits to psychiatric illness. And so, and so this is how far the research has come, and as long as research is in particularly the last sort of five to ten years. Um, so fermented foods, and then really healing the gut. One of the things you know, would get people to do a lot of is, is chicken broth and bone broth. Oh, okay, right, And, and right. Then there's some special molecules. How is that healing? Sorry, you were yeah, going to say yeah, special yeah. molecules. Special in molecules, they're called glycaminoglycans, and, and, and these glycaminoglycans are, are really key to, to healing the intestines, and, and there's little folds in the test, it's called veli. Yes. And it, and it helps those cells rebuild. Right. And, and when these glycaminoglycans get disrupted, from the foods we're eating, um, they need to be repaired and replenished. And, right. and, and chicken and bone broth is one of the wonderful ways to do that. Right. And also, it sounds to me like there's a, a huge education process that's needed almost, mm. because you're doing a tour around the country sure. talking about the connection between brain, the brain and the gut. Yeah. When I first read about your tour, I thought, well, what, what are we talking about the gut? What is, are we talking about the stomach? Like, yeah. Like, so it, I suppose for me it made me sort of realise that there does need to be some sort of education around what is this connection, is there a connection, yeah. and also you talk about the gut being the second brain. Right, yes. What do you mean by that? Well, regarding nerve engines and communication through controlling how we think and feel, it's basically, okay. it's, it's not, only, not only about here, but it's also about here okay. in regards to you know, controlling um, how we think and feel. So it, it's it's... Like for me right now, looking at research, it's almost like here controls more than, than how we think and feel. Wow. Uh, so this is almost more important yeah. than our brain. Yeah. And I suppose the good news with that is that we can control this. Yes. Because we can control what we put into yeah. it. Yeah, it's, I mean, absolutely. And I mean, obviously our mind controls a lot of these aspects. And yeah. obviously this is why psychotherapy is so good, yeah. therapy is so good for mental health. Um, it's because you're coming at it from the mind aspect. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, the more we can work in our thoughts, and that, fantastic. But the, the, the gut is also having, the gut's making up to 95% of our serotonin. Um, wow, okay, yeah. so that's the whole anxiety, yeah, depression, Yeah, exactly. So it's a really good, important, feel good neurotransmitter. So, is there a special food that we should be eating that's going to help with that and help lift those <laughs> serotonin? It's a special levels? food, yeah. Um, I don't know if they've actually done the research on specifically the, the foods yet for that, but uh, a specific food, but basically we're looking at plants, plant fibres, garlic, onion, leeks, artichokes, right. uh, beans, legumes, you know, peas, right. 
lentils. Real food. Real Just food. Real yeah, yeah. Food. So you know, whenever we're eating these things, we're feeding these bacteria and enabling them to make these molecules that help us think and feel better. Right. And yeah. So you know, we, I think one of the biggest takeaways I'd like for people to realise when they come to my, one of my events is that the food is so much more than just, just energy. Yes, yes. You know, we've got to be yes. thinking about not only is it you know, nourishing us obviously emotionally, but it's, it's giving us nutrients and we've got to be thinking about feeding the beneficial bacteria. Right, because I think our, our thinking around food has moved so far away from there. It's, I, I mean, I think a lot of people tend to think about food has to be pleasurable and it has mm. to be delicious and sweet and we've sort of forgotten that it's about fuel. Yeah. You know, it's fuel and then some. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's basically you know, giving, giving your body the physiological, meaning its physiological needs. Yes, and right. And I guess at, at, at the end of the day, the modern diet is not doing that. Right, okay. so many levels. And that's, that's the guts of it again, isn't yeah. it? That our modern diet is not giving us what we need. No. One of the other questions that I had from Instagram was around migraines. Mm -hmm. And is there a connection between what we eat and migraines? Um, when you start looking, you know, migraines are like a, a, a systemic issue, like like high blood pressure. So there can be a lot of things that will contribute to that. Okay. Um, but but certainly the foods we're eating has the have the ability to affect our hormone levels, and and and, and so you then and we know that hormones certainly have the ability to affect migraines, you yes. know, hormone mediated migraines. So I, I would I would say yes, but it's not a direct this that sort of right, thing. Okay, it, it's more okay. that as you get the whole body healthy, you get the gut healthier, the hormonal balance often gets healthier. Right. And as the hormonal balance gets healthier, the migraines get better. Okay, that's interesting. And that dovetails into my next question, which was around menopause. Uh -huh. So I had three M questions: okay. mental health, migraines, and the final biggie was around menopause sure. and the connection you were talking about in terms of hormones mm -hmm. and our gut health and how that plays into hormones, yeah. um, it seems to be quite key. So clearly there is a connection around what we eat and menopause and I suppose being able to um, focus on that part of our lives and, and I suppose travel that journey yeah. easily. Yes. <laughs> Without yeah. sort of major hard hitting hormones. Absolutely. So, I mean, there's my gosh, there's a bunch of great loaded questions in there. Yeah, so sorry. That's, no, that's, I right. think I no, that's just, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I got a good picture <laughs> of it. So, but specifically for, for menopause, like most women that we see um, who have problems with menopause hormonally, so our, our sister company does the most comprehensive hormone testing of anybody in Australasia. Right. So we have a lot of data on this. And, and so what, what we see um, is that women invariably have a hard time with menopause, often have very high levels of estrogen coming in. Right. Okay. They often have Where very- from? Uh, from their diet Okay, or so or? for a number of reasons, yeah. Uh, the, the high estrogen can be um, from the, not having the nutrients they need to clear the estrogen. Right, okay, the oh, uh, interesting. It could be from having gut issues, so right. that estrogen that's been um, bound up to be excreted out through the through the bowel um, will get re-released and reabsorbed. Right, so if you have right, gut issues, right. that's another reason that could be driving oh, to Oh, that's so interesting. To, so then you, you get more estrogen than your yeah, body can yeah, actually deal with. Yeah, and you can't get rid of it. You can't, yeah. oh, and, and then we're not eating necessarily the right foods, like the cruciferous vegetables that we need to actually help clear them. Right. Because we're eating you know, Western-style diets. We're not eating you know, vegetables for breakfast, for example. I'm a big fan of vegetables for breakfast. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, yes, see, that's so foreign yeah. to the Western diet. Yeah, it is. And so, and there's a number, of, and then the environmental, these are called xenoestrogens. These are molecules that mimic estrogen, and they're from the environment that BPA phylum from skincare products and plastics and so they're contributing to the estrogenic loads. So there's a number of reasons you know, where uh, you know, many women are getting high estrogen from. Right. And high estrogen is one side and then low progesterone. So progesterone, um, as, as women move towards menopause, you know, they may have um, um, an anovulatory cycle, meaning that they don't necessarily ovulate. Right. So they're not getting the high levels of progesterone to balance off the estrogen. Right. So again, that, that kind of leaves the estrogen is called unopposed. So okay. it can kind of okay. run rabbit. Run oh, rabbit. okay. And then as it as menopause and the ovaries go offline, the estrogen drops off a cliff. Right. Okay. And so the cells have got used to having all of this estrogen stimulating them. And then there's nothing. And then there's nothing. Okay. And so it's that kind of drop. So I liken it to a plane that's coming down from 30,000 feet and it's coming down really fast. It's in a free fall. Yes, basically. and it's going to be a lot of turbulence. Right, okay. <laughs> a lot of scared people. So, yes, scared men. <laughs> yes. 
So can you avert that? Can you sort of yeah. glide down yeah, slowly? Yeah, that's the goal. That's Absolutely, the goal. that's the goal. Is to, you know, what my advice to, to women who are going into this time of their life is, is now's the time to really, you know, take you know, take heed and start working on getting healthier. You know, like right. from all angles. So it's never better, too late. Though. Never too late. Okay. Never too late. Supplements. Uh, once you're in the turbulence, it's hard. Okay. You can do stuff. You absolutely can do stuff, but it's just harder when you're in the turbulence. Okay, right. So write it again. Yeah, I mean, you definitely can do stuff. Because um, also, this starts from a sort of like can start from late thirties, can't it? For oh, some absolutely. Women? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not and just I mean, oldies, like to me. be honest, with you, we're we're seeing it start in teenagers, and so it starts with with like endometriosis, so you know, that's an estrogen dominant disease. So, you know, oh. so teenagers may get diagnosed with endometriosis, high estrogen, and then they have infertility issues. Okay. Uh, and, and, and this is all back to our gut? It's it related to our gut and the food we're eating and how we're living our lives. Okay, okay. You know, stress as well, because yeah. stress basically steals the, your body starts prioritizing survival over reproduction. Wow. And so that then starts. So we're at a crisis point almost. Aren't well, this we? is why this is why we have. Uh, we, we surveyed nearly uh, fifteen thousand women a couple of years ago on hormonal balance. We found that eighty-four percent of them had at least moderate to severe hormonal imbalance. And so we know that hormones, are, you know, and that's what led to us actually founding Eve Health, which is our sister company that does so much testing right. on hormones to really empower women to be able to um, find. Um, what they need to do to feel their best. Right, right. That's interesting, and it's it is possible and achievable to to do that and and manage your hormones yeah. without hard hitting drugs. Yeah, for most people. Yeah, right. absolutely. For most people, um, invariably you get well. <clears throat> Um, you're always going to feel better. Yeah. It's just how much, how far can you go? Yes, right. Well, you know, there's limitations, but but yeah. you know, just almost bringing it back to when you eat well, you feel better. It, it's almost bringing it back to that, but scaled out. Right. Okay. Interesting. Now, so, what are the three things we can all do today? Yes. To feel happier mentally. Yes. And to feel healthier. Yeah, I think the first thing we can all do is, is breathe diaphragmatically. So breathing into the tummy. So basically, as you're breathing in, and we should go out, and then breathing out, and it goes in. Okay, right. Yeah, so even us just doing that, that's yeah. one moment we've I relaxed. Felt, I did, <laughs> I felt a little bit zen Yeah, we've been not as fast talking, it's just like, yeah. Oh. Oh. And so, yeah, and that's dropping the nervous system and, and dropping out sort of stress response, which is going to help us digest food. Right. So, so doing that before we eat, it's going to be, it's going to be wonderful. Um, the next thing, I, I, it would be fermented foods. It's trying okay. to integrate more fermented foods into our daily diet. Right, whether, daily. Yeah, so absolutely. Right. Yeah, every day, yeah. So whether that's a, you know, a, a fermented coconut yogurt um, on, on your, on your, Muesli, right. or you know, on your nuts and seeds, or whatever you have for breakfast, like that. Or on your veggies. On your veggies. Like, so for me, I go much better with with protein and fat for breakfast. So you know, for me, it's having some sauerkraut, perhaps with some eggs. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And and so um, that would be the, the next thing. And then the third thing where you would be trying to eat as many vegetables, um, and for breakfast. Right, wow. Yeah, it's trying to get so some veggies breakfast, in. Is breakfast key in terms of sort of starting off your day right? I'm a big believer that yes, I, I, I mean, there's different research around it, but I'm a big believer that if we can stabilize blood sugar levels, get some fuel on board, um, it sets up our metabolism for the day. Right, okay, uh, that so makes high quality fats and proteins. And so another way to get these kind of potential vegetables in would be with a smoothie. Right. So get some you know, greens in there, yep. you can add some protein sources. So, you know, because not everybody. You know, it feels like sitting down and eating. Absolutely, you know, or has the time to. Or have the yeah, time to yeah. eat, exactly. So, and there's you know, different ways we can get it in with a smoothie. Right. But, but we've really got to start. Even for me, through this tour, I mean, I've always you know, known the benefits and eaten a lot of vegetables, but through this tour, I'm starting to then look at food in a different way. Right. And I've been doing this for 20 years because I'm just like, okay, what, what, is my, what is my biome going to eat in that meal? Ah, wow. And so, like, so you're not thinking about what do I feel like well, eating? Like, no, like, what, where's the food for my biome? Oh, and wow. so, like, so you've got me thinking plant fibers, um, yeah, and ideally you know, these legumes, you know, artichokes are in season right now. So, you know, there's lots of different ways we can get them in. Right, okay, fantastic. Well, look, it's been amazing talking well, to you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Channels. I have learned so much, and I now know exactly what I need to do to feel a whole lot healthier and happier. Amazing. And who knew that there was such a connection? But yeah. clearly there is. 
you know, thank you so much, Ben. Thank and you. I will link down below where your seminars are. Are they seminars, events? Yeah, events, yeah. They seminars? Get, seminars, yeah. And, and so, yeah, they're... they're um, all over New Zealand? Yeah, all over New Zealand. And um, we've got a whole bunch of questionnaires for people that on our website that they can come and, you know, do a gut health questionnaire to see if they oh, have a gut problem. Oh, brilliant. Okay. And, or a hormonal problem. It sounds problem. like most of us will have a gut problem. It's quite common. <laughs> it's quite common. And so, yeah, there's definitely some great resources to, to help people. Right. Okay, that's really good to know. And I think all of us would love to feel a little happier and healthier. So thank you so much You're for welcome. sharing thank what you have today. You and all the best to your people. Being awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found something really interesting and useful that you can apply to your own life. If you did like this video, I would love you to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel for more and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. I won't make it easy for you now. up my time and I don't really break too easily but I'm worth it cause I'll slip into your dreams tonight oh, oh, oh.